I'll hold on to my faith Not looking back Focusing on Christ For the best to come In the trials of my and life And the troubles of this world the troubles of this world My conclusion My conclusion But I paid lately to fix this roof. Where's your mother? She's in the... Ah, you are back. Welcome. Where is that from? From the bedroom. But why did Ladele collect my money when he knew that he was not going to fix this problem? Hey, don't blame the poor boy. The fact is that the roof is damaged beyond repairs. My dear, go in and change your clothes before you catch a coat. Hmm. Mama Yele? Yes? We have to get to Ibadan first thing tomorrow morning. What for? We have to see Yele. Ah. to behave like a gentleman. Yes, sir. Now, let me give a pastor and shake. <sighs> Tennis. <clears throat> Anointed. <it. clears throat> you are never serious. <clears throat> Yele, good news. I mean, good news. What is it? Do you remember Planet Oil PLC? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I applied for a job there about six months ago. And I remembered I encouraged you to do the same. Correct. We have been shortlisted for interview. Oh, really? I pick our letters from my Popsy's post office box this afternoon. That is yours. The interview will take place in two weeks' time. Man, I'm gonna land this one. <sighs> well. I'll give it a try. Why do you sound this way? Be excited! Be excited, man! Be excited! What is there to be excited about? I have attended nine interviews this year alone, and nothing came out of them. So there is no guarantee that this one will bring anything either. Hey, 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 hey! Aren't you an issue? I think your Bible says with God all things are possible. <laughs> Dennis, you don't understand. Well, whether I understand or not, all I know is that I'm gonna land this one. And no stopping me. Catch ya. 
Later. Catch you later. Uncle. Oh, yes, Daniel. My daddy says he will join you very soon. Thank you. Um, Dan. Yes, Uncle. Uh, uh, please, uh, put on the air conditioner. It's already on. Oh, really? <laughs> well, uh, in that case, uh, please get me another bottle of water. How are you today? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, Brother Eli, you sound cold. Is something wrong? Uh, I'm okay. Well, I sent for you. I learned you were in church yesterday. Yes. Incredible. Uh, you mean you were in the church auditorium? Yes. Where exactly were you? I sat somewhere in Overflow B. Oh, then why didn't you step out to receive the most dedicated church worker award that was offered to you? I, I didn't feel like it. Oh? The award will not make any meaning to me. Oh, how do you mean? I have received this same award back to back for the last four years. Of what use is an award from the Church of Christ? When the Christ of the church himself does not recognize my labors in his vineyard. Brother Yeli, I've never heard you speak this way before. Now tell me, is something wrong? Brother Henry, I must confess to you, everything is wrong with me. Everything. My parents came from the village. Oh, they came on a visit? Oh. <laughs> They, they came to chastise me, uh, to scold, uh, and to abuse me. But why? They lamented about my sorry state of backwardness. Baba said I was a shame to the family. Mama was of the opinion that I am under a strange but powerful curse. Aki Yale, I don't know your problem. You better follow us back to the village. And let me take you to Gilpile where I go for spiritual cleansing. Eh? An abalist? Eh. No, I can't do that. I'm a Christian. You are a Christian? Akiyele, you say you are a Christian, yet you could not pick a job. Seven years, seven solid years after graduating from university. Not to talk of you. You are sitting us to take care of your younger ones in the school. Mm. Yet you cannot pick a wife. Here you are, managing the house of a boy whom I learned was your junior, junior in the secondary school. Be bashala lo juti na. Come on, toro legbe lo wegbe aburo re. Ah, akiyele. In spite of our several phone calls, you refuse to send money down home to renovate the family house. Yet, you say you are a Christian. You are shameless, useless, and irresponsible. Look, I swear, if you don't find a solution to your self-inflicted problems, we will disown you.
they went on and on. Much as I tried to explain my predicament to them, they simply turned deaf ears on me. They eventually left in anger. I can't blame them. I blame God, who chose to reward my faithfulness and commitment in his vineyard with stagnation and hopelessness. No, Brother Yele, don't talk like that. Huh? You see, my brother, I know how you feel. <laughs> there they go again. Everyone tells me he knows how I feel. How can you claim to know how I feel when you have never passed through what I'm passing through? Look at you, for example. You have a good job. You have a lovely wife. You are blessed with a wonderful son. You live in a fine apartment. Your personal house, for that matter. In short, things are working for you. But here am I. Without a job, not to talk of a wife. If not for Sukami, who was kind enough to allow me to live in his house while he's away at Uniben doing his master's degree program. I'm sure by now I would have been living under a bridge. I can't stop thanking you and the pastor for the financial assistance you render to me from time to time. Brother Henry, instead of being a testifier, testifying of the goodness of God in my own life, I remain a clapper, clapping to the testimonies in other people's lives. My life is nothing but a testimony of failures and frustrations. But Henry, for how long will this continue? Eh? For how long? Oh, my brother, it's okay. I know how you, I mean, God knows how you feel. And he's not unconcerned about your predicament. He cares for you. You see, in Psalm 126 verse 1, the Bible says, When God turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. And in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, God says, My thoughts towards you are thoughts of peace. Brother Henry, please save me the agony of hearing those scriptural promises again. I already know more than enough. My life is only full of promises without any fulfillment. Please let me be. Let God continue to deal with me the way he likes. If he likes, he can even kill me. Let God kill me. My brother, Let him brother, kill Yale, me. brother Yale, please calm down. Huh? You see, I guess there are some things you don't know about me. Well, I am sure you know I once lived outside this country, don't you? In the United States. Right. Precisely New York. You see, I was there for so many years, during which I ran and completed my master's degree program, after which I secured a high-profile, well-paying job I must confess, I was very comfortable. Hmm. As you very well know, the master's last command, go ye, should be our first concern. So I did not allow my academic and professional successes to hinder me from partaking in the Great Commission. I went around New York City and some other cities in America, preaching the gospel and winning souls for Christ. My conclusion is that God is so good. After 11 years of unbroken sojourn in New York, I decided to spend one of my three months annual leaves back in Nigeria. I looked forward to seeing my people back home. Above all, I relished the idea of preaching the gospel to my kinsmen. My pastor back there in New York found my decision to be away from the church for three months a bitter pill to swallow. According to him, I was an asset to the church, especially the evangelical team of the church. I must confess, I was so much loved by the pastor that he had to delegate his assistant to personally see me off to the airport. My conclusion, my conclusion is that God is so good in the trials of my life and the troubles of this world. My conclusion, my 
My conclusion is that God is so good. In the trials of my life and the troubles of this world, my conclusion, my conclusion is that God is so good. Back home in Nigeria, my passion for soul winning took a better of me. I had to join the church evangelical team on several mission trips to villages and hamlets. One of such trips changed the course of my life. One of the cars that were conveying us back from the mission field was involved in a terrible accident. I was in that car. Thank God, no one lost his life in that accident, but we all sustained various degrees of injuries. Mine was the most serious, as I suffered a spinal cord injury. When the news of the ugly incident got to my pastor back in New York, he broke the news to some church elders. Britain, I received this email from Nigeria yesterday with a very sad news. Brother Harry was involved in a fatal car accident over the weekend. By God's grace, he survived the accident, but he's in a terrible state. As a matter of fact, he's presently lying in a coma in the emergency unit of the hospital he was rushed to. He actually suffered a spinal cord injury, and he is built to go for a major surgical operation. Knowing how diligent and effective Brother Harry was in our church evangelical team before he left for Nigeria, we can do anything less than offer unseasoned prayers on his behalf. Right. Yes. Brother Harry must come out of the theater whole and perfect. Amen. Amen. All medical efforts to put my spinal cord back in place failed. Even overseas? Well, I requested that I should be flown abroad for better treatment. As a matter of fact, my brethren back in New York had even raised more than enough money to foot the bill for my air travel, my accommodation and uh, medical care in a reputable hospital in Germany. But the team of specialist neurosurgeons uh, that attended to me back here in Nigeria, led by an Israeli, told me to be of no use. Why? Well, they said I had suffered a complete spinal cord transection in one of my lumbar vertebrae. When the German hospital I was billed to go to for treatment had the report of the specialists in Nigeria, they agreed with their conclusion. I went in for rehabilitation instead and ended up in the wheelchair. Hmm. Didn't you pray about it? Oh, I did. Many groups and individuals also lifted up their voices unto God, traveling in prayers, asking God to get me back on my feet. Hmm. But God chose not to answer the prayers. Of course he did. He got me back on my feet. How? God got me back on my feet emotionally. He worked on my spirit that had been seriously dampened by the incidents. Hmm. He took me from the valley of despondency and placed me on the mountain of expectancy. He gave me beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. My spirit was seriously fired up that I even decided not to return to New York. Huh. Why not? Well, I chose to stay back in Nigeria and become a source of encouragement to the emotionally distressed. Hmm. This is serious. How did you manage to become so accomplished in life in spite of your disability? Hmm. My brother, God challenged me with the trials, travails and triumphs in some people's lives. Helen Keller who became deaf and blind shortly after birth, 
Yet, she committed her life to bringing hope to the physically challenged. William Carey's life was full of mystery and sorrow. Yet, he translated the complete Bible into more than 23 languages in his lifetime. John Bunyan was in prison custody when he wrote the immortal classic, Pilgrim's Progress. Albert Einstein could not speak until he was four. He could not read until he was seven. As a matter of fact, the Zurich Polytechnic refused to admit him into their institution. Why? Because he showed no promise according to them. My beloved brother, Albert Einstein went on to make it in life. He propounded most of the famous physics theories we know today. Fanny Cosby was totally blind, yet she wrote more than 8,000 hymns in her lifetime, including the evergreen. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the hand of faith and be closer drawn to thee. My brother, I think you can now see that it is not over until it is over. If only you can cross this obstacle, my God is going to give you a miracle that will make you become a spectacle in your generation. Amen. Thank you, Brother Henry. I received a letter of invitation to attend an interview at Planet Oil PLC. Oh, good. Wonderful. I had decided not to go for the interview. Why not? I felt nothing good would come out of it. But now, I have been seriously challenged by your stories. Your words of hope and courage have really challenged my life. In fact, I will prepare for the interview with three days of marathon prayers and fasting. I will be going to the Miracle Mountain for the three-day program. Fine. And the Lord will do you good. Amen. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, my brother. My conclusion, my conclusion is that God is so good. You have been traveling in serious prayers of intersection for Akin Eli Drutoi for several days. Yes, servant of the Most High. Akin Eli has also been traveling in serious prayers of petition combined with marathon fasting for himself for the past three days. That's right. But Oli Angel, why has prayer Yeli been denied of his much needed breakthrough all this while? Is it because of a secret sin in his life? No. Is it because he's under a curse? Not at all. Actually, some people do not get their much needed breakthroughs because of sins, causes, and even ignorance. But for working early, those are not the reasons. Is it because God does not love him? No. Is he destined to die frustrated and unfulfilled? No. But, uh, but why? Why is God treating his faithful and committed child this way? God is not unfaithful to forget man's labor of love. He maketh all things beautiful in his own time. When is God's time? Now. Why is it not happening for Brayeli now? God's definition of now is different from man's definition of now. In God's language, there's nothing like too early and nothing like too late. God is a God of punctuality. That is why He's called a present help in time of need. Man of God, tell Akin Yele to hold on to his faith and profession. For his field is fully grown. Very soon, it will be ripe for harvest. His cloud is really full. 
very soon it will begin to rain. Its miracle is imminent. Very soon it will get to his hands. My confusion, my confusion is that God is so good. So says the Spirit of the Most High God. Please don't lose that. I believe God will honor your prayers and grant you favor as you go for the interview. Amen. Sir, my faith has been rekindled. I can't wait to get to the interview and show the panel of interviewers the son of whom I am. I am the son of the living God. I'm connected in heaven. I cannot be rejected on earth. I cannot be dejected. I cannot be molested. This job is mine, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray with you. Thank you, sir. Father, I thank you for your son, Akiele Durotoye. As he goes for the interview tomorrow at Planet Oil PLC, I ask that your glorious process will go with him. Amen. Ultimately, let your will be done in his life. Amen. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Man. My confusion is that God is so good. Ah, <laughs> Madam, uh, to God be the glory. Let's thank him for everything. Huh? Uh, well, we trust him to help us do more. Uh, we just covet more of your prayers, Ma. Oh, uh, no, no, no doubt about that, Ma. No doubt. <laughs> thank you, Ma. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. I do have a nice day too. Bye. Who was that? Uh, Mrs. Humphrey, the principal of Hope Alive School for the Disabled. Uh, she called to express her gratitude for the cash and uh, material gifts we sent to the school on Monday. Oh, the gratitude should go to God. We are only stewards of God's resources. Uh, please get a calculator. Let's see how far we have gone. Yes. Uh, old people's home, 280,000 naira. Mm -hmm. Maasai mission field, 250,000 naira. Mm -hmm. Barako mission field, 250,000. Yes. Agegedu mission field. Oh, Oni. Which one is Agegedu? It is Agegedu. <laughs> Age, Age, Gedu. Thank you, my dear wife and lecturer. <laughs> Age, Gedu, Mission Field, yes. 320,000 Naira. Yes. Widows Welfare Association, yes. 450,000. Yes. Hubs for the Needy, 400,000 Naira. Yes. Uh, that's all. Now, what do they add up to? Mm, 1.95 million. Mm. Um, well, I think we can round everything off to two million naira. I was going to say that. But honey, it seems we've forgotten the request from the slump evangelism ministry. Really? Uh, I think, but we fixed them for the next quarter. Oh, that's true. Uh, in any case, let's forward 50,000 naira to them for now, with a promise to respond fully in three months' time. It's okay. Yeah. Please um, get the checkbook and write checks to cover all the names on the list. Which of the banks? I think we have enough money in all of our bank accounts, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, you can use any of the banks. Okay. Mm. Please help me with this first. Uh, thanks a lot. So you should be fast about this so that by tomorrow we can start dispatching the checks. Huh? Mm. Please come right in. Thank you, ma. You're welcome. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Yes, ma. Just a minute. Uh, you're welcome, ma. Thank you, ma. Uh, God bless you. Thank you, ma. 
What would God have me do for you? Thank you, madam. We are members of the Widows Welfare Association. Yes, I remember. You are the president of the association. You're right, madam. You are Mrs. Ori... Orima Degum. Bola Orima Deguma. Yes, I remember. I met you for the first time at the annual convention of all Christian Women's Forum last year. I remember you gave a talk on behalf of the Christian widows at the program. You're right, Mother. You're all welcome. Thank, Thank you, you Mama. Mama. Madam, a young man came to our sectariat yesterday with a check of 450,000 Naira. And he said it was a donation from your family to the Widows Welfare Association. We have since cast the check, but we are here to express our profound gratitude to you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. God bless you, ma. It's all right. Madam, you may not know it. Your gift will go a long way in lifting the burdens of many of our members. Just look at my sister here. She lost her husband five months ago. Hey, I'm sorry about that. Her late husband's family alleged that she was the one that killed her husband. They sent her and her four children out of the house, a house she labored to build with her husband. She was not allowed to take a single thing out of the house. Mm. They took over the three cars, including the family company. They literally stripped her naked and threw her into the cold waters of life. Mm. She ran to the church where herself and her late husband were generous givers for help. <laughs> The church gave her the sum of 2,000 naira and abandoned her to her predicaments. When the plight of her news got to us, we brought her under the umbrella of the Widows Welfare Association. We are still looking unto God for provision to alleviate her sorrows when your timely and precious gift came in. Madam, we are indeed very grateful. There is no need for that. God led us to do it. He also provided the resources to do it. To him alone be all the glory. My sister, I pray for you and your husband. You will never lack anything good. Amen. Before you ask for help, God will make help available for you. Amen. When the whole world abandoned me, a man in like me, he rose up to help us. <laughs> This is bad, man. Wow! I got it! I got the job! Oh! Ah, ah, you are here already? Sure. When I heard on radio that the result of the interview was ready, I called in your place okay. to inform you so that we can come here together. Only to learn from your neighbor that you went somewhere to pray. That's I checked your church and when I didn't see you, I decided to come alone. So, so, uh, how far, how far? I told you! I was going to land it. I got it. I got the job. Wait, um, <laughs> did you check my name? The personnel manager refused to show me the complete list. He said it was confidential. But I'm damn sure you also got the job. That's true. <laughs> Do you have your ID card? Oh, sure, sure. Wow. 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 This is wonderful. Come to think of it, do I really deserve this favor? God has been so good to me. I think it's high time I surrendered my life to him. Seriously, I'm going to become born again today. How far? I was not considered. Why not? But you are more qualified than I am. God. You have failed me again. What did you say? I was not talking to you. I'm sorry about everything. Don't do so. God can still do something. Yeah. <laughs> Yelly, please, I want to consider the request you have been making of me over the years. Request? What request? That I should be born again. God has been so good to me. I don't know how else to appreciate him. Look, I'm ready to give my life to him. Please pray for me. <laughs> God.
God has been so good to you, but he chose to be so bad to me. Look, I'm not in the mood for any prayers now. Just leave me alone, please. Ah, Yeli! Yeli! Sister Tola, <laughs> how are you? Sir. Fine, sir. <laughs> ah, you look particularly happy today. Sir, I can't look otherwise. <laughs> sir, do you remember the other time I spoke to you in church after a prayer meeting? That day, I told you that my chance of getting an admission into the university was shaky. Yes, yes. You told me your jam score was uh, far below the cutoff point. Exactly. Okay. Sir, that day, you prayed a short prayer of faith with me, after which you told me to go and collect my letter of admission. Brother Yeli, God has done it. This is my letter of admission. <laughs> Another testimony, sir. That same day, I told you of my elder brother who was built to undergo a major surgical operation. You prayed upon my hands and told me to go and lay my hands upon the afflicted part of his body. I did this and he regained his health instantly. Mm -hmm. He has since gone forth test in three different medical laboratories, including the teaching hospital, and they have all confirmed the disappearance of the disease. Ha! Brother Yeli, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen, sir. Ah, thank you. God hey, bless you. Yeli, see, I, I must see the pastor. We must see of this testimony, sir. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you, Bye. sister. Stay blessed. I am getting more and more confused. When I pray for others, God answers my prayers. But when I pray for myself, God looks the other way. He refuses to acknowledge my prayers, not to talk of answering them. What is happening? That's right. Now, which village did you eventually choose for the mission? Oh, so we eventually chose Ikbekon. Because of the higher population of unbelievers there. Ah, that's okay. Uh, how many brethren are going for the outreach? Um, 33 members of the evangelical department and another 14 from other units in the church have indicated their interests, sir. Oh, making a total of 47? Oh, yes, sir. That's wonderful. Uh, Dikin Bolitifer told me that you have volunteered to foot the bill of transportation and feeding of all the brethren going for the outreach. That's right, sir. Thank you, my brother. May the good Lord bless you abundantly. Amen. Amen. Uh, madam, are you joining them for the outreach? Um, no, sir. The stress might be too much for Daniel. Oh, yeah. Daniel, the young pastor. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, by the way, it, it won't be advisable to allow you face the rigors of a village mission. The stress might be too much. And considering your present state, the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. And sir, so while I'm away on the mission, my wife will go for a monthly uh, family outreach. Uh, she'll be visiting the motherless baby's home with some welfare packages and the good news of the Lord. Uh, so we covet more of your prayers. That's all right. But Henry, I must confess I'm proud of your family. I'm not surprised at the way God is embarrassing you with blessings on every side. And thank you for this check. I'll deliver your message. <laughs> May the good Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Let me pray with you before you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Father in heaven, I thank you for this family. I ask for them this day a multiplication of grace, Amen. anointing, Amen. favor, Amen. peace, Amen. joy, Amen. blessings, Amen. and protection.
Hello, Brayeli. <coughs> Good afternoon, sir. How are you today? Uh, sir, God has done it again. Oh, praise God! Come on, share the testimony with me. God has failed me again. I, I was not considered for the job at Planet Oil PLC. Whereas, an unbeliever who got to know about the vacancy through me got a job in the company. Brakiele, it is well. All things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Don't worry, God has not forsaken you. Uh, sir, I'm, I'm afraid, sir. I find it hard to believe that God has not forsaken me. In any case, I, I, I just called to inform you that I will be returning all the departmental files in my possession to the church office. Why? Uh, sir, I, I'm relinquishing my post as the HOD of evangelism and the follow-up department. No, you can't do that. Brayele, do you really understand what you have just said? Uh, very well, sir. I, I, I need a break. I must find a solution to my problems. Solution? Where? Anywhere, sir. Anywhere. Since God has chosen to abandon and forsake me, I, I, I must do something about myself. Brakin Yele, do you remember what the Bible says in Proverbs 24, verse 10? If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Well, I was going to send for you to come and pick a check which somebody dropped for you this afternoon. Huh? A, a check? Yeah, bro. Henry said God instructed his family to help you set up a business of your choice. And so he dropped a fat check. But since you said God has forsaken you, I think the best thing to do is to... Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, no, sir. I I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I know God still loves me. <laughs> he lost me. Well, see me to collect the check and for a short discussion. Thank you, sir. I I'm grateful, sir. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Ah, Brad Chooks. Yeah, how far have you gone? Okay, Aruba. Uh, that's wonderful. Yes, they are about to take off too. Any moment from now. Yeah, I'll deliver your message. Bye. That was Brad Chooks. Okay. They have just passed Aruba. Oh, they are so close to Ikweko already. Uh, I, I told him you'll be on your way any moment from now. I think you should be going now. That's right, sir. God will be with you as you go. Amen. He will grant you a journey mercy. Amen. All of your endeavors Amen. will end well. Amen. We will bless God for you. Thank you, sir. Honey, please take care of Daniel. I will. It's well with you. And take care of yourself. Thank you. You can see I'm busy. Um, I, I won't take your time. I'm here for two reasons. Uh, first, uh, to apologize seriously for my snobbish behavior to you the other time. And secondly, to tell you how to become born again, just like you requested the other time. Surprise, surprise. Yeli, what has suddenly come over you? Wow. I mean, your sudden change in disposition. I was literally on my knee the other time, begging you to show me how to be born again and to pray for me. But you refused. You worked that on me. Uh, I'm sorry. You see, I was seriously devastated by the result of that interview. Uh, but uh, God has compensated me in another way. Uh, somebody gave me a big monetary gift. Look, 
<laughs> it's a posited check. I I'll cash it in two days' time. And the Lord is good. Eh, uh eh, -huh. uh -huh. I knew it. I knew it. I knew something must have informed your sudden change in behavior. Uh -huh. Dennis, I I'm sorry. Well, I'm no longer interested in your born again stuff. Oh, why not? Yes, your reaction in times of disappointment and troubles. I've given me the impression that Christianity is not good enough to help one stand when problems come. Uh, Dennis, you, you know, that, that's not true. Moreover, you are nothing but a bread and butter Christian. Uh, you love God only when things are well with you. Uh, Dennis, <laughs> you, are, you are still annoyed. <laughs> Don't be annoyed. Sincerely, I'm not. I've only lost interest in being born again. Please excuse me. Dennis. Dennis. I'm sorry. Why are you doing this? Good afternoon. What's the matter with you? Sir, I went to the bank with the check and I was able to cash it without any problems. But as I was about stepping out of the banking hall, a gang of armed robbers stormed the bank and ordered every one of us to lie face down. They robbed the bank and every customer that had Cash on him or her. Oh. They snatched the money from me. Everything. Oh my God. I would have come immediately after the incident. But some policemen came to take statements from us. This is serious. But pastor, why does God hate me so much? No, please sit down. <sighs> Brierly, God does not hate you. Then where was God looking when the ham robbers snatched the money from me? The same place he was looking when his only begotten son was tortured to death on the cross. Brierly, in everything give thanks, so says the good book. Give thanks? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. It's easier said than done. Come to think of it, why would God allow this kind of calamity to befall me? Why me? Why me of all people? Why? Brierly. Don't ask that question. When you ask why me, what you say in essence is, why not another person? For all you care, calamities can as well befall others. To hell with them. That kind of a question is not supposed to come out of the mouth of a good Christian. Good Christian? Am I a good Christian? Of course I'm not. Otherwise, God would not have allowed this bad thing to happen to me. Look, you see, when a Christian weeps, the devil laughs. When you complain and lament, the devil is entertained. Brother Yele, I beg you, do not let the devil rejoice over you. 
I'm sorry, sir. I've already made up my mind. I I'm giving myself a break for now. Bro, really? What's that supposed to mean? God has been most unkind to me. Of what use is it serving a father who allows bad things to happen to his children? In any case, that is the file for evangelism and follow-up department. I'm relinquishing my post as the HOD and I'm giving myself a break from the church while I, I, I look for a solution to my problem. Thank you, sir. Brian 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 What? Tom is not true. Please. Tom is not true. That was what I had. Oh my God! Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I've always told you that the church you're attending is the source of your problem. For God's sake. What do you expect from a church where the pastor frightens the congregation with messages on sin, judgment, hell and the likes? For God's sake. I recently stumbled on your pastor preaching on television. I think the topic was when storms come. I think the particular episode was, was part six. Yeah, part six. Can you imagine talking for about six hours on nothing but trials, troubles, and afflictions? What do you expect to gain from that? Look, when you consistently listen to negative messages, your life ends up in negativity. Uh, sir, this is the new one. I hope it is genuine. Uh, Abaoga, you can trust me now. See for yourself. <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. Just go and fix it and be fast about it. Okay, sir. You see, Christianity is good news. Period. Any preacher who prepares his hearers for evil through the kind of negative messages he preaches <laughs> is nothing but a fake minister. Excuse me, my children. I'm sorry to cut into your discussion. If your last statement is anything to go by, that means the Lord Jesus Christ himself is fake. Because at a point during his earthly ministry, he prepared his followers for evil by telling them of the inevitability of tribulations and how to respond to them. In John chapter 16, Verse 33, he said, In the war, ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, have overcome the war. I think, on the contrary, it is those preachers who say, once you are born again, you can never have problems. That should be considered fake. I've heard some of them boast arrogantly that they don't have problem in life. Lie! Blattered lie! A lot of them portray themselves as superhuman beings who are free from trials and tribulations. They secretly pass through various pain and agony which they refuse to expose. So as to protect their ego and retain their self-imposed hygienic status. Why Jesus Christ rested in either part of the ship? They claim they never get tired. This means they are more powerful than Jesus Christ. Lie, blattered lie. My children, problems are part of life. What we need to pray for as Christians is grace to pass through the shadows of death and come out victorious. What? Yeah. What is it? Oh my god. Who is it, please? I'm the one man. Tola. Come in. Good evening. Ah, good evening, Sister Tola. You're welcome. Yes, 
Hey, Ma, is the pastor in? Yes, he is. He's on the phone. I hope it is well. Mommy, something terrible has happened. What is it? There was a robbery incident at Paragon Bank this afternoon. Yes, we have heard about it. Yes, Ma. But after the operation, the, the, the robbers tried to escape from the bank, but their getaway vehicle refused to start. So they ran into the street and shot sporadically into the air. They stopped another car, dragged the driver out of it, and escaped with the car with the owner still seated in the back seat. We later got to know that the car is Bro Henry's car, and the occupants were his wife and their son, Daniel. She was on her way to the motherless baby's home. You mean they went away with Brother Henry's wife and his son? Yes, ma. Why? What for? But ma, not long ago, we heard that they... That... They what? What happened? They, they eventually ran into a stationary petrol tanker at Technical College Junction. The car and the tanker caught fire, <laughs> killing everybody in the car. Ah, Jesus! Oh, Sister Tola, good evening, sir. What is the matter? Sister Tola brought the news that Sister Alice and Daniel were killed as the tr robbers tried to escape. Hmm. That was what Engineer Folaje just told me on phone now. Ah, Sister Alice. You mean Sister Alice is dead? Uh, this, this is serious. <laughs> Sister Tola, thank you. You can go. Okay, sir. Bye bye, sir. Sorry, honey. Alice. Honey, could it be true? Hmm. Could it be true? Uh, I, I find it hard to believe, too. But Engineer Fulaji is an officer of the Federal Road Safety Commission. You must have confirmed the incidents before phoning me. Oh. What are we going to do now? We have to invite Briary from the mission field. I, I, I'll send some elders to fetch him. Bonnie, please. Sir. Thank you. Brother Ali, don't mind that dama. Is a no school believer. Come over to our church. Come and listen to the good news from my ever charismatic, ever efficient, and motivational pastor, Bishop Gold Mumbai. Let him show you the path to greatness with profound expositions from the Word of God. Let him mold your destiny with positive declarations. Let him shape your future with anointed prophetic utterances. Let him launch your life into undeniable breakthroughs. Eh? Bro Yele? That's all right. That's all right. I'm sorry. I can't give you a ride. Since we are both going in entirely opposite directions. Excuse me. Take this for your transport fare. Thank you, Brother Joe. I will see you later. Mm -hmm. I'm very grateful. All right. You carry your mommy. Like Baro Long. Go to your DC or Lola. You daffo. A meal, Baba, a shoe, a shoe. You are going to your lounge, come on, you. Well, a cook a low. What are you, Yomi? Pastor Emeka. 
Bikin Kayode. Hey, what are you doing here? Saturday, Larry, one in Lee Bale. One la one bedding at a one toku. Bale, none of you came more wine. Ah, hey, a washing woe, I do a yag bar. Ah, hey, please sit down. Thank you. Hey, surprise, surprise. Eh, eh, she mo yo dafun yin. E ba mi ki baba. Eh, a e pele se o. Ori yo mi o ki bale o. You are most welcome. Thank you, bro, Henry. Ah, baba e ku kale o. E pele eyin yan mi. E pele ku joko se ku yin. Baba used to be the chief priest of Alakpa Afa shrine. Really? He is, yes, he, he surrendered his life to Jesus 4 days ago. Really? Thank God for that. <laughs> Uh, what of the other brethren? They've all gone to Ikpekodo, a nearby village for our daily house-to-house -house evangelism. Um, well, I don't join them for this. I normally stay back home to pray for them and uh, to counsel our converts who come visiting, just like Baba. Hmm. Uh, they'll be back before evening to prepare for our daily open-air crusade. That's wonderful. Hmm. That's very great. Thank God for your lives once again. Thank you. We thank God. Amen. Amen. O lo nfi bibeli salaye fun mi pe Olorun kan wa to lagbara ju alapa afawo salu wa ilo yato si yun gbogbo gba lo atawon yoku re nfuruko Jesu dabira fun gbogbo wa labule te ba ro ni ruru ise iyanu tan ti gbese ah eru o ba yin se to mo le ode wa to ya genigan ti won mu lara da la fe so ni abi okan lara ya wa un oloye to sa dede fo sanle toku ta furuko jesus gbe dide ai mo ye awon abirun tan mu lara da ogo ni foluwa loke orun ai ba ndupe lo re tori lati jo mu ti faye mi fun jesus dojumo lo fa do aran lo tin si nko mi loro olohun iru oni bai iwe ro mu laka oni kini o ya mi ninu fe jesus oni oni ruru isoro lo le doju komi gege bi oni gbagbo awon bi ipanju inira la sigbo inu ni bi ni idanwo igbagbo ati adanwo aye o wa ni ninu gbogbo nkan won yi pe mo ti ju asegun lo o wa kin laya oni bi ogun ti le le to oni gbagbo o gbudo de yin leyin jesus be ni eh baba ah o kon lori nkan o o kon lori pe bi na banjo emi o tele jesus bojo ba nro emi o tele jesus bi na banjo bojo nro n o tele rami lowo jesus kin tele odopin baba e ti gbagbe ori mo je gbagbe ru orin bahun mo je gbagbe eyin e do na eyin eyan mi se ise pe e wa ku awon eyan wa pada lo siguro <laughs> ah baba e wo aba yin yo gan se ri jesus te fi aye yin fun yo mo yin duro do pe ami aba yin yo e se won pele to omo mi yo do la kon e be ni baba e ma pe lo la awon o je pe e mo pe nkan ta fe gbe yewo tun po awon o je pe e ba nki mama ta won aburo mi to yin eyan mi baba e je mo e to lo o e ma lo ba won o e se o baba o da bo ah ah ohere well done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The Lord is your strength. Amen. 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 Well, uh, you see, I, I must confess, I'm, I'm really baffled at your unannounced visit. It is most unexpected. Well, uh, you know there is no GSM network in this village. So there was no way to inform you of our coming. Well, I, I want to believe all is well at home. Ah, Jesus is Lord. Um, all is well. How has been the mission? Ah, God has been most faithful. I really thank him. Uh, how are my wife and uh, my son? Mm -hmm. It is well. It is well. It is well. And, and all the members of the church? Yeah, it is well. It is well. It is well. Ah. Meaning you just...
Sister Tola, is it true? <laughs> Royally, it is true. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. Pastor Emeka and the King Kayodi have just traveled to Ipeka to bring Brother Harry back home from the mission field. Ha! Ah. Jesus Christ! Ha! Ah. Why should this bad thing happen to Brother Henry of all people? Ah! Why do bad things happen to good people? Eh? Why do the righteous suffer? Why? And Broyeli, you have just echoed the unanswered question in my heart. Something like this happened to the general Vashie of my church in Lagos. He had just finished preaching a powerful message on a Sunday morning when he slumped and died right there on the altar. The incident shook the whole church. Some members became backsliders. As a matter of fact, many of them stopped coming to church. I also know many dedicated children of God who have died under mysterious circumstances. Many have become invalids as a result of terrible sicknesses that have defied medical and spiritual solutions. Many are still battling with different types of life problems. Poverty, joblessness, barrenness, and so on. See, see, the irony of the whole thing is that there are unbelievers, I mean chronic unbelievers, who are rich, Healthy and flourishing. Yes. Hmm. Bro Henry will need a very special grace not to be shattered by this occurrence. In fact, I, I, I doubt if he will be able to stand this one. Losing a wife and a son in such a tragic manner. Ah, this is too much. It's too much. Deacon, is something the matter? I asked you the same question before we left Ikbeko, and I've been repeating it all through this journey. You keep saying it as well. I'm not a small boy. Tell me, Pastor, has something gone wrong? It is well, bro. Henry. Bro, Henry, it is well. Ah. Brethren, Pastor Emeka and the King Kaode are in town with Brother Henry. They just gave me a phone call. Uh, they'll be here any moment from now. They did their best not to break the news to him on the way. Sir, they are here, sir. Okay. You remain here. Please tell them to wave Brother Henry to my office through the other gate. Okay, sir. I'll join them in a moment. Okay, sir. Brethren, this is the most critical moment. I beg you, do your best to comport yourselves. Um, I noticed that some brethren are gathered in the auditorium. And meanwhile, today is not a fellowship day. Uh, what could they be doing? Uh, um, actually, you're welcome, sir. Uh, Pastor, you're welcome, sir. Uh, Pastor, sir. Pastor, sir. Brary. Thank you, sir. You, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. How has been the mission field? Thank God, sir. God has been most faithful, sir. They say God is faithful, yet He allows evil to befall His children. They say God is good, yet He allows bad things to happen to His children. At times, He does things that make one wonder if serving him is worth it in the first instance. <sighs> if God can allow this type of calamity to befall a good Christian like Brother Henry, a generous, faithful and dedicated child of God, 
ten. This is my conclusion. God is unfair. God is unkind. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, oh, my God. My God, I sacrificed my energy, my resources, and my time to go to the village to preach and to propagate your kingdom. <laughs> Only for me to come back and hear that my beloved wife and my only child at dead. <laughs> I, I can't even see their dead bodies. To touch them, maybe I will receive some consolation, Lord. Oh. <laughs> God. For allowing this calamity to befall me. This is my conclusion. Briary, that, that's all right. Please remain quiet. He is God. Please. Please. God, I know you are the Almighty. And the God of the valley and the God of the mountain. You are the God of sunrise and the God of sunset. Your ways are beyond finding out. Your acts, your acts are beyond comprehension. You are the unquestionable king of the universe. Oh, Lord, in spite of this tragedy, Father, I hereby confess. You are kind. You are good. You are my father. I will serve you all the days of my life. For this God is my God. Forever and ever, he will be my God from now, even unto the end. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I declare that I love you. I declare my everlasting love for you. <laughs> You're yeah, good, Lord. You're yeah, good, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Brethren, I stand before you today to proclaim that in my 22 years of service in the vineyard of God as a pastor, I have never come across a Christian who is able to declare his continued love for God in the face of a terrible adversity like Brian Henry is doing.
Brayari, we sincerely share in your grief. May the good Lord console and comfort you. Amen. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace, will clothe you with divine peace. Amen. For your shame, God will give you double honor. Amen. Amen. Um, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Good day, officer. Please, we are sorry to interrupt your meeting. Uh, please, can we meet the pastor of this church? I am. You are the pastor of the woman whose car was snatched by the fleeing armed robbers and reportedly killed later? Uh, yes, I am. And this is her husband. We just broke the news to him now. Okay, well, uh, we are from the state headquarters of the Nigerian police. Well, we now have a true picture of what actually happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as the armed robbers were escaping in the snatched car along with the woman and her son, uh, the car's security timer was activated and the engine stopped working. Uh, in their haste and anxiety, the robbers abandoned the car in the bush along with the woman and the boy. Uh, they stopped another car, pushed down the driver and escaped in that other car. Uh, they later on ran into a stationary petrol tanker abandoned by petrol vandals at the Technical College Junction. The car and the tanker both caught fire, killing the armed robbers in the process. Uh, gentlemen, I'm happy to inform you that your wife and son are both well and okay. Officer, where are they now? I, I mean the woman and, and her son. Uh, some villagers helped her back to the town. And they brought her straight to our station. And she's currently with the police commissioner at our headquarters. Um, you are requested to come over to pick her. Thank you. Thank you, officer. Uh, we'll join you right away. Congratulations. Congratulations. My wife and yes. son are alive. Yes, yes. And, well, and well too. The Lord is good. Yes. I, I, I feel like praising God. I, I, I want to worship God like I have never done before. I want to worship Him like I've never done before. Yes, I'm ready. I want to worship Him like I've never done before. Yes, I'm ready. I want to worship God. Once more, 
I congratulate you and your family on this double miracle. Thank you, sir. The great deliverance of your wife and son, mm -hmm. as well as your inexplicable healing. Mm -hmm. Brethren, this is a lesson on how to respond to trials of faith. Mm -hmm. The true color, the real taste, mm -hmm. and the correct aroma of a tea bag is never known until it is thrown into hot water. Mm -hmm. In like manner, the true value, the real depth, and the correct status of a person's Christian profession is not known until it is passed through the furnace of trials. Mm -hmm. When trouble comes, what a lot of Christians do is to summon God to the court of human reasoning and logic. They ask questions such as, God, why me? God, are you still alive? God, where were you when this evil befell me? All these are foolish questions. Some even command God to solve their problems within a stipulated time. Otherwise, they've stopped serving him. They give the almighty God a deadline. Not knowing that anyone who gives God a deadline will ultimately arrive at a dead end. Beloved, I charge us to remain steadfast in our profession, even in the face of trials and troubles. Let us remember what the scriptures say in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. I ask you today, even in your present travails and troubles, I mean now that you are deep down in the valley of tribulations and afflictions. Now that you are battered on every side, now that you are in the dark abyss of sorrow and anguish, now that you are facing the toughest trials of your life and there seems to be no hope, what is your conclusion about God? Sibe olu adara Oti Jesus, 
bere ati opewa si be ho dara kole jani kule si be ho luwa dara oti mo koni o ida mu